What makes a good PhD research project? Now, the typical answer would be something about finding a gap in the literature or making a significant contribution to the body of knowledge. Now, these are kind of true, but they're incomplete and a bit vague. Now, of course, the exact requirements will differ depending on your field, and there will be a lot of different aspects of research design that will be different depending on the project aims and the techniques that you're using. But there are some universal principles we can follow. So in this video, I'm going to share what I think are four crucial factors that need to come together to make a good PhD project, and why, if any of these are missing, it can cause a lot of problems. So let's start by thinking about what we actually mean by a good project. Now, many people will think about it in terms of coming up with a PhD project proposal that will get accepted, or completing a project and then getting the degree. But there's more to it than this. A PhD project isn't just about you meeting the requirements for a degree, it's also about what you get from the process. So ideally, a PhD project should be a vehicle for developing useful or valuable skills and expertise. And it's quite possible to pass a PhD, but then find that there's no demand for the expertise that you've developed. So it's important to think about the skills you want to develop and how the project will serve you in the long term. And it's also important to think about the kind of work that suits you, because what might be a suitable project for one person might be completely unsuitable for another. For example, if you don't like doing statistics, but you love talking to people, it makes much more sense to do qualitative research. The quantitative aspect might be worthwhile, but maybe not for you. So, Let's say that the first factor is that the project has to align with your interests in two senses of the word, in terms of the subject matter you're interested in and in terms of your long-term benefit. Another way in which a perfectly good project for one person might be unsuitable for another relates to the resources you have available. So this might be access to equipment, to data sources, to participants, or other resources. So let's add practicality as a second key factor. So the project has to align with your interests and be practically achievable. So a lot of projects I come across are wildly overambitious or overcomplicated because when you don't have clear guidelines, the natural temptation is to make the project as ambitious as you can imagine. But often it's the simpler, more focused projects that are the best. Now, simple doesn't mean easy, but at least it means that the project is actually achievable. And what determines whether a simple project is a good project is whether or not it's of potential interest to the field. So novelty in terms of finding what they call a gap in the literature is not necessarily enough here because you could have a completely original, well-designed and well-executed study, but if it's a topic that nobody cares about, then it'll be extremely difficult to get published. And you may find that your PhD is of little value to potential employers unless you've developed other clearly valuable skills on the way. So often it's best to find a research area or problem that others are working on and then find something original to work on within that area. Or if you're doing something really obscure, find a way to relate it to an existing problem that others are looking at and make sure that you're developing skills that could be valuable to others later. And one way to judge this is to simply look at the job market and see what kinds of skills and knowledge are in demand. And it's probably better to do this early than to wait until your final year and then discover that there are no jobs available. 
So let's add this third factor, meaning your project should be practical, it should align with your interests and be of potential interest to the field. And the fourth and final factor is the support you get from your supervisor and department. Now, I often say that who you work with is just as important as what you do because the support and guidance you get from your supervisor and your department is one of the biggest factors in the experience and outcome of your PhD. So if you have a good supervisor whose interests align with yours and who acts in your best interest, they can help you in terms of the practical aspects of the project. They can help shape your project to the interests of the field. They can teach you how to do research and think like an academic, and they can help mentor you in your career. So their job is to help facilitate your research while also allowing you the freedom to find your own path. But then there are supervisors who, instead of acting as facilitators, act as barriers, holding you back until you meet their unspecified or ever-changing demands, often refusing to meet with their students or abandoning them partway through if the project no longer interests them. Or worse, they will keep students around in order to do teaching or other work. So if your interests don't align with your supervisors, or if you think that they don't have your best interest in mind, I think it's better to change supervisor or leave rather than to suffer for their approval. A good supervisor, if their research interests don't align with yours and they're unable to offer the support you need, they should step aside and help you find a more suitable supervisor. If they don't do this, or if you fear reprisals, if you were to change supervisor, it is a massive red flag. So these are the four factors that I think need to come together to make a good project. It needs to align with your interests. It needs to be practically achievable. It needs to be of potential interest to the field. And it needs the support of an interested supervisor. If there's anything you'd like to add to the list, or if you have any thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. And as always, if you like these videos, please hit like and subscribe. And also check out my website at phd.academy, where you can find details of my academic writing course, and you can sign up for the email list so I can let you know directly when I publish new videos. So that's all from me, and I'll see you in the next video.